So, if you would, turn in your Bibles to 1 Timothy, chapter number 6. And 1 Timothy is right before 2 Timothy. And the passage of Scripture is verses 1 through 12. And the title of the message is, For the Glory of God. Interesting thing, I was looking at Bible passages that I might use for today's lesson, and the lesson that I decided to use as a template when doing my notes was entitled, For the Glory of God. And it happened to be that the passage the Lord led me to here in 1 Timothy, the theme was, For the Glory of God. And that is coming through on the live stream. Oh. <laughs> well, the live stream, I'm not back there, so I wouldn't necessarily know. So I hear that and I'm like, oh, it must be on there. And I didn't recognize it because I'm uh, being more loud now rather than uh, when the game was. Because the game, there's gaps and periods of quietness, and you wouldn't necessarily hear something like that. But you should all be in 1 Timothy chapter 6 by now. The Bible reads, Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men, of corrupt minds, and destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and to many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men into, in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, will, while some covet after, they have erred from the faith, piercing them, pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on the, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. And I pray that you'd work greatly in this time. May it be for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, you start off in verse 1 and 2 with the saved servant or slave. The Bible says, Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed, and they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, 
but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. So first off, you see that uh, the unsaved servant or slave, uh, the, the saved servant or slave, is to honor their unsaved master. This is so that God is shown through their actions. Now, I don't think any one of us in here is a uh, slave or a servant to a man. So, you look at this, and you might wonder, how does it apply to me? Well, I'll get to that later on in the message. But the saved servant must also honor their unsaved master, and if you don't do that, you'll drag God's name through the mud. You're to honor them so that God is seen and that, uh, through what you do and that God's uh, name will be shown great and they might be saved. And if they do get saved, praise the Lord for that. And then you also see, honor your saved master. Do not despise them and go above and beyond in your service to them because you are kin in Christ. Now, with that, you have that we all serve Christ, and we are all servants and slaves to Christ, because our love for him makes us do what he wants, or at least it should. And we ought to honor God through that. But sometimes in life, things don't always go the way we want them to. And when that happens, you shouldn't despise God. Because that's just not smart. God, he allows things to happen for his glory and for our benefit. We need to trust in that. Now, both the honoring the unsaved master and honoring the saved master, both of those are done so that God might be glorified through the actions. And that is a core thing that should be in all of our lives, that Christ is glorified from our actions. And you see in the last part of verse 2, these things teach and exhort. Now, in verse 3, you see the opposite of that. Or you see a negative example. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing. So the proud teacher, he rejects that of honoring God in everything. And he, in uh, the latter part of verse 4, it says, But doting about questions and strife, whereof cometh envy, strife, railing, evil surmisings, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth. So not only do they reject the honoring of God, but they use words, the proud teacher uses words that are not helpful or not healthful to the body of Christ. They are words that are not designed to help Christians to grow. So, there are some things that will help Christians to grow, and that's the Word of God. And there are some things that you might say that uh, can help people to grow that are based off of the Word of God and godly wisdom. But then there's things that are meant to divide. And those sort of things is what you see with the proud teacher. And verse 4, you see he really doesn't understand God's word because he knows nothing. His life is not centered around giving God glory. And the proud teacher, that's not a good place to be. And you see that he incites controversy and wickedness. An example of this, and I've heard this many a time, 
Can God create a rock that he cannot move? This is an age-old controversy. It attacks the omnipotence of God. Because if you say, yes, then uh, God is not omnipotent. If you say no, then God is not omnipotent. And it is a question meant to incite controversy, and it attacks God's omnipotence with man's foolishness. And the proud teacher, that's what they want. They want to attack uh, the truth of God's word. They want to incite controversy and wickedness. And that's not a good thing. And you see in verse 5, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of, truth, of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. So, you also see the proud teacher might claim to be religious, but really doesn't have God's uh, saving grace uh, with him. Now, the Bible says they're destitute of the truth. And that is so sad. Someone who is teaching the word of God that is uh, not wanting to see God honored, they're destitute of the truth. They don't know it. Because God's word, it points to honoring God with all that we are. And it points to giving God glory, and God must be paramount in our lives. And the proud teacher, that's not the case. And in the Bible here, it looks as if they aren't saved. Now, oh, I, it's pretty clear on that, but when you're a really weak Christian, you also have it being almost indistinguishable, so I uh, I would say they aren't saved, but you could possibly make a case they're a really weak Christian. But we as Christians, our minds have been, they were corrupted by sin. But the Holy Spirit, uh, by the truth of God's word, helps restore our minds to restore us to what we ought to be, God-honoring Christians that do all for the glory of God. And... You see that these, uh, the proud teacher, they have a corrupted mind. And in our sin nature, we had that. But God has changed that because corruptness has been replaced by God's word in Christians. And praise the Lord for that. There is so much in our Christian lives that we could not do without the power of the Holy Spirit. And I am so thankful that we have the Holy Spirit within us. And the proud teacher, they teach gain is godliness. Now, there is one person right off the top of my head that comes to mind, Joel Olstein. And uh, he teaches gain is godliness. If you give so much money to the church, God will bless you and you will be right with God. That's essentially what prosperity gospel uh, in America teaches. And it is false. We as Christians must stay away from that. We must focus on God's word. Because God's word is truth. And we ought to get from the Bible what the Bible says about the Bible. And we ought to follow that. And while uh, gain is not godliness... We as Christians, we have a different kind of gain that we get. And you see that more in uh, the latter part of these verses. But in verse 9, they say, uh, the Bible says, But they will be rich, uh, they that will be rich, fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, while some covet 
after they have erred from the faith, piercing themselves through with many sorrows. So the rich, they would rather seek the world's riches than God. And I know many people, they would rather have the world's riches than having God honored in their life. And that's not good. The rich, they will find much hurt and unhappiness from their desire. And some of this hurt comes from their sins that they have been ensnared by, first of which is greed. But it is as the gateway drug of sins, for out of it springs all sins. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And a lot of translations translate it as all kinds of evil. But the love of money, it has something other than God being at its core. And if something other than God is at your core, then your uh, wanting is not going to be right, and you won't do as you ought. And if God is not your core, then you need to be saved. Because uh, God, by the Holy Spirit, works in us uh, and is at our core. And as the Word of God works in our lives, and the Holy Spirit works in our lives, we will grow more and more Christ-like and more and more God-honoring, and we won't have to worry that some of these uh, things, because God helps us to stay away from sin. And I am so thankful for that. Now, that doesn't mean that we will ever be without sin on this earth. That will only happen in heaven when God removes all of our sin. But by the Holy Spirit, we can sin less and less and less. Now, in verses 6 through 8 and verses 11 and 12, we see the servant to God. So, in the first two verses of this passage of Scripture, you see the servant, the saved servant. But we all are servants to God. In verse 6 through 8, the Bible says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be content therewith. We as Christians are servants to God. He is our master. Everything we do should be for his honor and for his glory. And God provides what we need. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. His riches and glory, infinite. So God can supply all of our needs. And God provides what we need. And when we are content in what he has provided, there is gain. And it is a gain of happiness, and it is a gain of loving God. And that is far greater than the gain of money, the gain of this world. Because the world, it's finite. God, the gain that we get from him, has eternal ramifications. Rich man's gain, it's only temporal. We, as Christians, have greater gain. And praise the Lord for that. In verse 11, you see, But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. So, uh, the first part of that verse, it's saying, flee the love of money. And where should you flee to? Flee to God's word. And flee to uh, letting the Holy Spirit work in your life so that you are putting God first and so that God is glorified in your life. Now, we are to flee the love of money and follow 
that which is glorifying to God. And then you also see, we are in verse 12, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art called and hast, hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So we as Christians, we are to fight the devil and show that we are Christians, that we are of God, that God's word is in us, and that we are not of this world. God can work in us something great, and we ought to be showing God to this wicked and sinful world. And I kind of hit on that a bit in the God's word is truth uh, lesson that is uh, live today. Well, it's not live. It was pre-recorded, but it's up uh, today. But God has a plan for us, and we can show our Christ-likeness to the world, and we can show them that God is love and that God's word is true. We can do that, but do we do that? We ought to. We ought to fight what the devil has, which is for us to fall into the love of money or to fall into sin. But if we are in God's word and the Holy Spirit's working in us, we can fight against that. Now, I believe we're all Christians here. So if there's anyone on the live stream that's unsaved, know this, God loves you and made a way for you to be saved from the torments of hell. Call upon Jesus for your salvation today and be saved. To the Christian here and on the live stream, are you striving in every aspect of your life to be honoring and glorifying to God? If not, you need to uh, pray about that and be in God's word and let the Holy Spirit work in you. And you can only see that sort of growth by the Holy Spirit working in you. And if you don't have that right, if you don't live every aspect of your life for the honor and glory of God, you need to get that right. We need to get that right. So that it can be said of us that in everything... We do all for the glory of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. And I pray that you'd bless the food that is to come. May it be for your honor and glory. And I pray that uh, you would let this message be greatly used for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.